to be here with all of you tonight. Thank you so much, MVP, for uh, inviting me out here. And thank you so much for your support of our work. Um, even though we're a new organization, um, you all have been really strong, funny partners and just lifting up our work in wherever spaces you're in. So I really appreciate that. Um, and you know, I'm so excited, all the framing um, that I just listened to, um, you, you know, it's good to continually hear it. And like you said, repetition is holy. So like really internalizing it as well. Like, yes, we will win, um, you know, and I, I truly believe that. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm here to speak a little bit about um, our spring 2023 plans, um, specifically surrounding the Wisconsin Supreme Court race. Um, so a little bit more about myself and my organization. My name is Monka Donway. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. Um, and I'm here representing Freedom Action Now. Um, you'll hear me also refer to us as FAN. Um, we are located in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and we are a Black and Southeast Asian-led organization um, that is really fighting to make sure that um, specifically survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault get justice um, and are able to participate um, in the electoral process and, and build political power. Um, and so that's a little bit about us. What I really want to focus on when it comes to the 2023 um, spring elections um, is you know, our focus on Southeast Asian and Black voters. Um, so that is definitely um, a strategic um, intervention on our parts. Um, we definitely educate and, and work to um, turn out and call and, and door knock um, all Wisconsin voters, but we are um, keying in on it has specific strategies around Southeast Asian and Black voters. And here's why. Um, you know, Wisconsin is a purple state and it's all about um, connecting with um, with everyone, but also folks who are in the margins and can actually win those elections for us. Um, one key highlight or thing to know about the Southeast Asian community um, in Wisconsin is that, you know, it's one of the largest API populations in the state um, and mostly centering in Dane County and, and Milwaukee County. Um, and so, oh, sorry, can you go back to the last slide? Yeah, so <laughs> this is all about API voters in Wisconsin. Um, and just some key facts that I think that you all be really interested to know um, is that, you know, the largest ethnic groups um, among API groups in Wisconsin, again, are Southeast Asian. Um, and those are people who are in our base. Um, and then also um, the API population of el eligible voters grew by 64% between 2010 and 2020, um, which compared to 6% change for the rest of the state. Um, and so we definitely have a huge opportunity to get new voters um, and to bring in new progressive voters into the electorate um, through if we have really great um, you know, strategies focused on those communities. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, another community we focus on is Black voters. Um, in 2022, um, Black folks accounted for 6.8% of Wisconsin's population, and Milwaukee and Madison are home to the largest Black communities in the state. This is significant because um, we saw the, we're seeing the downturn or the decrease in Black voters um, turning out. Um, and it's important to know that Black voters are facing a lot of challenges and barriers when it comes to voting in Wisconsin. Uh, this quote that I have up here um, is from one of our um, supposedly like nonpartisan um, election commissioners, um, Robert Spendo from December of 2022, referencing um, the decrease in voter turnout in Milwaukee County and bragging about it. And so there's a lot um, that we're fighting against. Um, and you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of different strategies, but the main one within Black communities is that narrative building and our ability to get on the doors and on the phones and run ads and send mailers and things is the biggest uh, force to combat um, all of these um, voter suppression tactics, right? Um, and so that's definitely a huge part of our strategy around winning the state. Um, and, you know, it's really important to know, like, that this is what we're facing. And so if we want black turnout to come back up, 
um, we're going to have to invest like we want to win and we want Black turnout to come back up because it takes a lot of work. Um, and like I said, folks are facing really, uh, really like huge challenges and barriers to voting and voter suppression in, um, in Milwaukee, especially. So what is our spring election plan looking like? Um, we are really um, interested in, like Rima was saying, um, having bold um, and innovative strategies and tactics um, and scaling up around those. Um, you know, a lot of our work that we're gonna be doing or that we even that we have been doing for the primary, that's what we're gonna have in 2024. Um, contrary to like previous years or a typical year in Wisconsin, don't have any more elections before 2024. So whatever we build now is what we're going to have for 24. Like we can't just show up in February of next year with like the whole like vote or die messaging, right? Like it has to be like connecting and throwing down in this race in a really big way um, and making the connections for voters that, you know, this is what we actually have to gain through voting. Um, and, and what better race to do that with than one that has such huge implications for reproductive rights um, in Wisconsin. Um, and so, yeah, that's definitely something that we're looking to um, build on from last year um, and really continue growing, like, especially um, in our state that is so, again, like narrative building is so important, um, making sure that we're actually getting out there to um, counties where Southeast Asian population is really strong um, and where the vote margin might be 2,000 votes, right? Um, and those votes add up, um, and it's really important um, that we start building the infrastructure that we're going to need in 24. Um, and so, yeah, that's mainly um, what our field work and on-the-ground work is going to look like for the rest of the campaign here. Um, and here's just some of our information for you all to keep in touch with us. Um, you know, we always are putting out things on our social media, voter education updates about um, the work that we're doing and everything. So please, please keep in touch with us. Um, like Rima said, like this is a super important election, not only because of the, you know, intervention opportunity for um, abortion rights and reproductive rights, but also uh, just because you know, we're building towards 2024 um, and our people need to see us and hear from us, um, especially when it comes to turning out um, in elections and making those connections for our folks. Um, and with that, I will say thank you and turn it back over to Rima.